It started when I spotted this cool poster online. I contacted Coolstop. I wanted a sip of understanding. Soon I was drinking from a fire hose of knowledge. Here is as much of that knowledge of bicycle disc brakes as I can cram into a reasonable period of time. I've used Coolstop products for decades and have always been pleased with their performance. I'm fairly fussy about braking. Are you? Let's find out. Name a situation where you apply your brakes but don't really care how they perform. That situation does not exist for me. From raw stopping power in all conditions, to consistent modulation, to reasonable service life, I expect a lot out of my brakes and I expect it every time. The poster of brake pads seemed like a handy reference, so I wanted to get a little more info. I spoke with Tim Watson, president of Coolstop International Inc., and with Randy Smith, plant manager for Coolstop. Both were extremely generous with their time, and it took quite some time for them to share just a small part of their extensive knowledge with me. A bit of company info first. Coolstop is headquartered in Lake Oswego, Oregon, just south of Portland. They've been making bike brake pads since 1977. They design all their pads in-house. Their rim brake pads are produced in the U.S. and their disc brake pads in Taiwan. I've chosen key points from my interviews with Tim and Randy to cover in this video. I'll provide discussion based on these interviews, my independent research, and my personal experience. Let's launch. First, the Coolstop Comparator poster is available as a PDF download from the Coolstop website. I have a link in the description. A full-size poster is available to bike shops. Just contact Coolstop. The posters provide information on backing material and pad compounds, which pads have special cooling features, and which pads are recommended for use on e-bikes. They also have available this convenient four-page full-color guide to their rim brake pads. The posters are helpful as they show the shape of the pads and, in the case of the shop poster, show the pads in actual size. Lots of brake manufacturers use other manufacturers' pads, especially Shimano pads. Shopping for pads by brake manufacturer can work, but you'll often get better and faster results by shopping by pad manufacturer. Note that the numbers shown on the poster are not industry standards. There are no industry standards, and really, why would there be, in an industry with countless styles of bottom brackets and headsets? Anyways, numbers shown are cool stop skews. From Randy, the question I get asked all the time is, how long will these pads last? Randy tells him there's no way of knowing because there are too many variables. Some riders might get three runs out of a set of pads, while others get three years. He also explained that Coolstop engineers their products to give the best balance of performance, and managing pad life is part of that process. Randy says, The other thing we get asked all the time is, how are your pads better than the pads from XYZ Company? Here again, Randy emphasizes that Coolstop puts a lot of effort into R&D to ensure optimal performance. Performance characteristics can vary between manufacturers. We offer what we feel is best for our market. From Tim, there are fundamentals that end users need to know when thinking about bike brakes. The manufacturer, whether the brake is mechanical or hydraulic or a hybrid, which is a hydraulic caliper with cable actuation, and finally, whether it is one or two pistons per side, that is, whether it's a two or four piston caliper. Randy says mechanical discs are not for novices. They can be fussy to set up and can require frequent tweaking, maybe as often as before each ride. I've run mechanical discs before, Avid BB7s for both road and mountain bikes, and would not consider using them again. I have TRP high road hybrid brakes on my gravel bike, they're better than any rim brakes or mechanical discs, but not quite on par with full hydraulic discs. The use of a quality compressionless cable, such as is available from Coolstop, is essential with hybrid discs. Tim also offers a pre-ride checklist that should be completed before every ride. Check the brake function, make sure they actually work. Check pad wear, it should be even from side to side. Never allow pads to wear to the point of metal-to-metal -metal contact between the pad backing plate and the rotor. Make sure the pads have the right gap to the rotor to ensure proper modulation. My own research has shown that hand strength and sensitivity is best at partial closure. If your brakes engage when the lever is nearly fully extended or when it's very close to the bar, 
you'll likely experience poor braking control and fatigue in your hand and forearm. Randy says pad selection should be based on the intended use. He notes that there are two basic types, centered and organic. Centered pads last longer and handle heat better, but aggressively wear rotors and can be very loud. Organic pads run cooler, quieter, and produce much less rotor wear. He says, probably 90% of riders are perfectly well served with organic pads. Few riders actually need center pads, but may buy them anyway. My feeling is that this demand is fueled by misplaced machismo and the delusion that I need gonzo parts because I'm a gonzo rider. The truth is, most of us are just average riders. I'll never be on Pink Bike's Saturday Sends compilation videos, and neither will most or perhaps any of the viewers of this video. Sorry to spoil it for you. Tim says lots of brake OEMs say to use only organic pads because they are disc friendly. According to Tim, the industry standard for pads is four millimeters of overall thickness. Typically, this is a backing plate of 1.9 millimeters with 2.1 millimeters of friction material. He says this is proving inadequate for e-bikes in many cases. Coolstop makes pads just for e-bikes with special friction material and a ceramic heat barrier. These are denoted with an E on the chart. Tim says this is a great improvement over other pad designs, but that the market would be better served if bike manufacturers would adopt the brake standards used for mopeds. You may have ordered the right pads and found they didn't fit properly. How can this happen? Tim says manufacturers will periodically rebuild or replace worn tooling. In that process, small changes can occur. The challenge for aftermarket suppliers then is to create pads compatible with both the original and later brake assemblies, which sometimes requires that the pad manufacturers replace their tooling with new pieces. Randy made several observations about discs. He says it's generally not necessary to replace the rotor with the pads. Make sure the rotors are clean and straight and check for excessive wear. Spray cleaner should be used as a last step on any brake work. You can check for straightness by spinning the wheel on the bike and watching pad clearance. You can also mount the wheel in a truing stand and use a dial indicator or even just a stick to check for true. A micrometer is best for checking wear, but you can also use your fingernail to check for a ridge where the wear surface meets the body of the rotor. If there's a noticeable ridge, it's probably time for a new rotor. He says you can typically run 15 or 20 sets of organic pads before it's necessary to replace the rotor. Randy notes that rotors have features such as grooves and holes to help with heat dissipation. He says some holes are necessary, but too many holes or large holes are unneeded and just accelerate pad wear. I wrapped up my conversation with Randy with some discussion about the market. I said it seemed crazy that there are so many styles of brakes and brake pads. He said that the bike brake industry is very secretive and that manufacturers are eager to secure design patents. No one can use that design for the life of the patent without licensing the use from the patent holder. I know from my regular work writing for commercial clients that such licensing agreements can provide substantial revenue. I mentioned Randy that I ran a pair of 2010 model year Avid Code brakes that I still think are the best brakes I've ever used. I said it seemed to me manufacturers were constantly introducing new brakes, mostly as a marketing exercise, so they could be constantly providing what they claim to be new and improved products. Randy says there is some of that, but there have also been significant advances in recent years with better heat handling characteristics and the wide availability of four piston calipers. My interviews with Tim and Randy were hugely productive. I interview people for a living and have done so since 1985. I've spoken with hundreds of subject matter experts over the years, and Tim and Randy were as proficient as any of them. My thanks to both of them for their help in this video and for their commitment to making exceptional bike products. My thanks also to those supporting my efforts. You can do so on a monthly basis through Patreon or with a one-time contribution through PayPal. Links are in the description. I'm Rich Reese, and I'll see you out there.